Christopher Harris is wanted after he allegedly shot a police officer while authorities responded to a burglary call. Investigators say Christopher Harris, quote, ambushed that officer, both firing shots at each other. The officer was hit and immediately rushed to the hospital while Harris allegedly ran on foot. Anytime there's somebody, uh, you know, who's involved in something like this and who is armed and, and not found, uh, you know, there is concern for the safety of the community. And so everybody should be very conscious of their surroundings and what's going on. And, of course, if they uh, see anybody that's suspicious, that uh, doesn't seem to belong where they are normally at, uh, they should call the authorities. Well, he that, said that, doesn't that, seem to belong. Come on, Arbery. That's gonna cause problems right there. So a sister yep. hear that and lose her shit. Yep. Normally at, uh, they should call the authorities. That officer has been released from the hospital. Harris, though, is 34 years old and was last seen walking near downtown Okmulgee, believed to be armed with an AK-47. If you see him, do not approach him. Call 911. Mm. A family is desperate for answers in a double shooting that left one man dead and his teenage son in critical condition. I'm Shay Rozzi. Sarah has the night off. We've been covering Tulsa's latest homicide since it happened just after noon today near 56th Street North and MLK Junior Boulevard. Fox 23. God dang it. <sighs> It happened just after God noon today close. near 56th Street North and MLK Junior Boulevard. Fox 23's Alex Cash is live after talking with family members tonight who lost one loved one and hope they don't lose the other. Alex. This family is devastated. This mom is dealing with the loss of her son as her grandson fights for his life. The shooting happens at her home. And she just wants to know who did this and why. A mum and grandmother dealing with shock and grief. They shot my son six times and my grandson four times. This was definitely intentionally. Gaileen Goff says she left her son, 34-year-old Micah, and grandson Malik, who's 16, at home around noon on Friday. Soon after, her loved ones were gunned down. I heard they wouldn't let me up here. My grandson was in the front door bleeding to death mm. there, and my son was dead in the backyard. Galeen says Micah died at the house and Malik is in the hospital fighting for his life. And he hanging off my friend and his daddy is dead. It's touch mm. and go. They don't know. No, no, no. It's touch and go. They, they, they just don't know. Gaylene says Micah was a good dad. He rode horses. He spent time with his boys. He has three sons. And the other Malik that was here with him, his oldest son, they shot him too. He spent time with his sons all the time. He loved his kids just as I love my more fathers in the house will fix this problem. Yep. <clears throat> More black men in introduced into the situation. You got a combustible situation here, and the only thing that'll fix it is the introduction of more black men. Of more guys? <laughs> Oldest son, uh, they shot him too. He spent time with his sons all the time. He loved his kids just as I love my kids. The street outside the house was taped off while police investigate. Gaylene says officers searched through her home and she says that there was one other person at the house when the shooting happened. Broad open daylight and ain't nobody seen nothing. Even the person was here that they let go. Ain't nobody seen nothing. Police say they don't have a lot of information on the gunman, but said he was wearing black shorts. And there was someone there, and the police let him go. Mm. The house when the shooting happened. There's a bunch of black people shot up, and someone there, and the police questioned them and let him go. You hear that, fucking sisters? All you got to do is say, hey, man, I ain't, I ain't nothing to do with it. And then they track you down for a gun. All right, man. We'll, we'll give me a name and ID. We'll, we'll get back to you if you need to talk to you. 
the the super sister would be like, well, why they stop him though? Because yeah, right there. <laughs> sisters think that like when there's a shooting in the neighborhood, they just go around and fucking interrogate every fucking son man in the area and shit. Sisters are stupid, man. You're fucking retarded, man. You gotta live here and shit. These are your sons and shit. How the fuck do you think that's what happens after a shooting? Pins. Broad open daylight and ain't nobody seen nothing. Even the person was here that they let go. Ain't nobody seen nothing. Police say they don't have a lot of information on the gunman, but said he was wearing black shorts and no shirt and that he ran away from the area. Gaylene says someone must know something. For somebody to come in my home and do this, for what reason? What reason did they have great enough just to take their life and come in my home? I don't understand it. I really, truly don't understand it. I hope whoever did it don't have kids of their own and don't have to feel what they just made me feel. I hope they don't. Police are searching for this gunman this evening. If you have any information that can help this family, you're asked to call the police. You can do that without giving your name at Crime Stoppers. The number for that is 918-596-COPS. Thank you, man. Look, here they go again. Look. Live look now near Cameron and Maine in downtown Tulsa. Happening right now, as you can see, a bike ride fundraising event in honor of Black Wall Street and the Tulsa race. It's nothing but gliders, though. Find me a son, man, in this fucking bike ride, man. Cameron and Maine in downtown Tulsa happening right now, as you can see, a bike ride fundraising event in honor of Black Wall Street and the Tulsa Race Massacre. The Community Light Foundation is hosting its second annual Ride to Remember event. Cyclists of all levels are taking off on one of four routes through North Tulsa. This year, proceeds go toward Fresh RX Oklahoma. It's a nonprofit that sources food for those living with diabetes. Looks like they've got a little. They was all white. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I got. I gotta say, man, to be honest, watching white guilt is like watching a bad train wreck. You just can't look away, bro. It's like, what the fuck? But they should feel guilty. They definitely burned Black Wall Street down, right? Yeah, Shame man, on for no reason, too. Yeah, yeah. man, we need our reparations. Yeah, there was no reason for them to do it. They just. So all black people had a barbershop and a notary public and a grocery store. Maybe a hair salon, perhaps? Hair salon and shit, a goddamn um, shoe repair place, and fucking... I would assume a liquor store, you gotta have a liquor store. You gotta have a liquor store, and a, yeah, you know, maybe a motherfucking, um, maybe a motherfucking florist or some shit like that. They call that shit black. Maybe a, a uniform store, you know, yeah. for, you know? Yeah, was, yeah, maybe something like that. But for, the, for the hard, for the hard work in uh, laborers. Yeah, and, 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 and they got the nerve to call that shit Black Wall Street. You niggas are fucking wall. Y'all sick, man. That's a sickness to call that. To call that a Wall Street, you gotta be fucking sick. Right. Did you know that black folks invented? We are Street? hearing for. Yeah, of course. You know, um, something about racism, right? One part, yeah, I, I heard that story. Some Wall Street was racist in one half of the street. And black, blah, 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 whatever. <laughs> We are nearing 48 hours into the search for this man, Christopher Harris, accused of shooting an Okmulgee police officer with an AK-47. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Shay Razi. Sarah has the night off. Now, we told you a burglary call led to the ambush and the exchange of gunfire. The officer is going to be okay. That's the good news. Only on Fox 23, crime and safety reporter Abigail Dye is live with one family story on how this manhunt led right to their house and she has the latest on the search. Abigail. Shay, this search is still very active. We saw multiple law enforcement agencies, of course, including Okmulgee police, searching the house where this all began, but they came up an empty handed. And of course, police are considering Harris armed and dangerous, though it is possible he might not have the AK that he originally shot this officer with, because today I spoke with a neighbor who says police found that gun in his backyard. 
armed and dangerous. The search continues for Christopher Harris. You know, it's kind of like, dang, it's like, so it was kind of like a movie scene going on type of deal. Keelan Dean said it best, vests, rifles, canines, law enforcement is suited up and all in on this manhunt, searching several houses since Thursday. So this happened while you were gone and you just came yeah. home to your door looking yeah, like we this? Just, yeah, we just came home. As you can see, um, our neighbor actually boarded the door up for us. Dean says he wasn't home when law enforcement visited his house. The neighbor boarded the door up for him. Give me an idea on that neighbor. <laughs> Give me an idea on that neighbor, chat. happened while you were gone and you just came yeah. home to your door looking yeah, like just, this? Yeah, we just came home. As you can see, um, our neighbor actually boarded the door up for us. Dean says he wasn't home when law enforcement visited his house. They still decided to kick in our door, you know what I'm saying, and throw a search warrant, destroy my room, look in drawers, look, on, look through all types of stuff, flip my bed up. But he was when they found Harris's gun in his backyard. Uh, the cops, they have two ARs outside our door. They're right here. And they're walking. I guess uh, the guy dropped his AK-47 in our backyard. And so I guess they thought he was. Yo, why does your backyard look like this, though? Damn. Like a hurricane hit it. That's embarrassing, man. <laughs> That's fucking embarrassing, man. Jesus. They have two ARs outside our door. Look they're right like here. Africa. And they're walking. I guess uh, the guy dropped his AK-47 in our backyard. And so I guess they thought he was under the house. Dean's yard backs up to where police say Harris shot an Okmulgee police officer. <laughs> that backyard fucked up. <laughs> that is like the hood. People are fucking savage. I ain't no backyard, man. Mm. I'm telling you, man, we, we ain't been on all fours for that long. I mean, we ain't been on upright for that long. We were on four, all fours in the recent, maybe not <laughs> thousand years, but closer than other groups. We were the last group to stand upright. Officer, after trying to break into Harris's own parents' home, Harris has been on the run ever since. And this is what law enforcement continues to do. They'll get a tip and they'll follow it through, like searching this house on the corner of First and Porter. They're looking for Harris, but so far, none of these tips have led them to him. Officials haven't given us many updates on the search, but it's clear they have all hands on deck. I appreciate everybody that's you know, out there looking for the suspect, and uh, I appreciate everybody for doing their jobs. Clean your backyard, bro. Right. He doesn't even sound like someone who lives somewhere where a yard is like that. Yeah, it's, it's just it's, it's, it's embarrassing, man. You feel... It, I feel bad for them because it's like, damn, like no one would ever known y'all was living like that if this son man when they came and did all this shit. Y'all could have hid that. Now everybody knows that's what your shit looks like. Mm, mm, mm. Black Wall Street, man. Now, tomorrow marks one year since the deadly shooting on the campus of St. Francis that took four innocent lives, including this man, Dr. Preston Phillips. Fox 23 Scott Martin talked with a St. Francis doctor who describes Phillips not just as a mentor, but a friend. There are times when we doubted whether or not we could do it, but, but uh, with God's blessing, it took place and we served many people. Dr. Kami Fali is pictured here in Africa with Dr. Preston Phillips, a man he considered a father figure, a man he says can't be replaced. It doesn't seem like uh, it's uh, almost a year ago. It doesn't. Um, it has been hard, difficult, um, because this is a guy, it's difficult to fill his shoes. On the day of the shooting, when Dr. Folly learned it happened in Dr. Phillips' office, he tried calling him five times. Then he made his way to the emergency department at St. Francis, where he got the heartbreaking news his friend and mentor died. I found one of our pulmonologists on the way. And he told me there's a shooting in Dr. Phillips' office. And, and I said, then what happened? He said he didn't make it. I didn't know why I, I just scrolled down. 
in tears. In my lab coat, I was on the floor crying because I couldn't imagine that. But that's how I heard the whole thing that my friend was gone. The lab coat, once worn by Dr. Phillips, is now the centerpiece of Dr. Folly's office. He says Dr. Phillips told him days before he sensed his life was soon ending, but he didn't know why or how. He said, hey, son, he did like that. You know I'm older than you. I said, yes, then what? He said, you know, in case something happened to me, don't stop this project. And then a few days, I heard that I won't see him. That was our last conversation. Folly says Dr. Phillips was a godly man. He believes Phillips was led to pass the torch of their mission work onto him. He left us something behind we can hold on. You know, and, and, and I am proud of that. And I'm happy that even though he didn't know something would happen like that, he gave me directions to not stop. Keep going. Dr. Folly says some of their proudest work together was in Africa with the Light in the World Development Foundation. During their last trip, they saved a young girl whose parents both died from HIV. Look at his team. A bunch of gliders. A salute to him, man. A salute to this guy, man. Their last trip, they saved a young girl whose parents both died from HIV. After learning of Dr. Phillips' death, the girl wrote Dr. Folly a letter saying Dr. Phillips became like her father. He not only gave her life, but compassion and a reason to keep living. It made me cry, uh, but I understand that the grief continued because of who he is for anybody who's close to him. Other people in Africa have been waiting for surgeries as part of Dr. Phillips' medical missions, but it's not the physical healing they're worried about. It's losing a man who was important to them, someone who truly and deeply cared for them. These people come, it's vivid in their mind. They miss him the most, not for what they are going to receive, but they figure out that they lost somebody great. Somebody very important just left us, laying down, he lay down in the cemetery as we speak. Dr. Fale is continuing his medical missions and has been back to Africa three times in the last year. I think God knows everything. And he's the midst of all this with us. That's why I'm confident that we will make it. And he's gone. And I don't think that we are going to forget him. He left behind some some good work uh, uh, that we can carry on. Carrying on his mission to save lives and the message Dr. Folly says Dr. Phillips would tell everyone today. There's no need to fight. Let's love each other. Let's work out our difference. Not see each other eye to eyes and, and be compassionate. And that's why he would tell me to tell people. Of course, you know, it was, a, it was a son man who killed this guy, Preston, and the four of the three other people. That's what a sad story, man. What a sad fucking story, man. That guy was giving surgeries to fucking African villagers. We talking about people that don't even, you talking about not having an ID, or not having access to health care?